Tony, you were here at the Eden Mill Blendworks creating your own gin and helping to create the Generation Hibs gin. How did you find the overall experience? It was really a fantastic day. I'm not a big uh, gin drinker, you know, and uh, but I've tasted it over the years. But it's fascinating to watch what they do here. And of course, Eden Mill's a quality product, so a quality team, a quality product, ideal combination. We're certainly uh, inquisitive, uh, always asking questions, knowing that uh, it was a drink of Dutch origins as well, so you That's must right. be somewhat of an expert. Well, my office is now in Amsterdam, just near Amsterdam, you know, so over the years I've developed some expertise in the, the Dutch way of life, I understand the origins of gin come from the Netherlands in around about the 15th century, as far as I'm aware. Do you mind just telling us a little bit about the work that you do now? I work now for the World Players Organisation called FIPRO, uh, and we um, have a position on the stakeholder committee of both FIFA and UEFA. It means that we're involved in decisions at the highest level of the game which impact on players. I've been there now for 14 years and for the first sort of six or seven years I worked globally, uh, which meant I covered you know, literally the world. But the last six or seven years I've been concentrating mainly on the UEFA territory. But it's mainly about players' rights. Uh, I mean, a big issue, for instance, is the international match calendar. How many players... Uh, can I, how many games can I play playing within a year? So that's the type of issue that we discussed in conjunction with the football authorities. How much are you enjoying that? Obviously, it uh, must be quite a lot after uh, almost 15 years in the, in the role. Yeah, it's a really, I really enjoyed it. You know, I'd, I'd done the job in, in Scotland for a long time as a PFA representative, uh, so it was really interesting working at that level. And, and obviously, that you're dealing with uh, the ultimate power brokers in, in world football and European football, so that was a real learning curve for me. I think just uh, as well with it being a Generation Hibs gin and with us being here, just take a look back uh, over your career very briefly. You were quite young during you know, the Turnbulls Tornadoes, just breaking through into the game. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was a really, um, a real, when I look back at my career, I was really lucky to play with that group of players. And you look at the 11 that played in the 7 nothing game and, and the League Cup final victory against Celtic. But you always look at the quality of that um, squad. The people at Joe Hart, Ali McLeod, Des Bremer, Bobby Smith, Wally Murray. They, they were not in the team on a weekly basis, so they had a real quality 16, 17, 18 players that used to run at the time. And really, I think everybody uh, acknowledges that we should have won more than what we did, but certainly I think for Hibs fans, uh, after the Famous Five, that was probably the most entertaining side to watch. There's probably not too many uh, better players uh, to, to have been sort of, you know, developing under with uh, guys like Pat Stanton, Jimmy O'Rourke, uh, Alan Gordon all in the team too. You know, you must have picked up a lot. I was, it was fantastic. Pat was on, and Jimmy, and all these guys were really helpful to a, a young player like me trying to break through into the team. <coughs> And um, Pat wasn't one of these guys that shouted and bawled. He was a role model, just the way he played. He always did a quiet word with you. And uh, Jimmy Root, of course, fantastic goal scorer. John Brownlee, you know, you look through that team, it was star study. Uh, so it was a great, uh, a great team to play in uh, during that time. It's only when you get a bit older, you appreciate how good it was. What was it like working under Eddie Turnbull as well? Eddie was a, a coach beyond his time. He wasn't the most timid of men, as most people would indicate, but he had a great knowledge of the game. Uh, but he was very, very hard and he made sure that everybody worked hard in the training ground and, and it, people understood their role within the team. He played with Brown and Shadler as two almost like wing backs, you know, again that was innovative at the time as well. So he was a coach well ahead of his time. And I think just as well, just uh, to, to wrap things up, uh, you're of course uh, meeting some old faces uh, that, that you've known from previous times and of course uh, David Gray and Louis Stevenson, part of the Scottish Cup winning squad, you were part of the presentation ceremony, what was that like? That was great as well. I must admit, there was a sense of trepidation when the SFA contacted me because I'd played or scored in the last Rangers Hibs final in 79. So they asked me would I come along and present the medals that most Hibs fans are thinking, oh, hopefully not another uh, loser's medal. But as we get closer to the game, uh, and I thought that um, Hibs had better preparation time, I was really confident on the day. So it was a magical end with David scoring that goal in the last minute at Hamden Park. And uh, like anybody else, I was enthralled. I had to be maintain my decorum of course you know being there but it was a great it was great to be part a small a very small part of the history of the club.